this year is one of the best selections of cars we've had in a long time. It's, it's been a phenomenal year um, for performance cars, which we, we knew it was going to be. An SUV on Evo Car of the Year. I think many of us never thought we'd see the day. Welcome to a sunny angle seat for Evo's 2020 Car of the Year. We have 16 of the greatest driver's cars to come out this year, and our job this week is to whittle that down to eight finalists that will go through to Scotland and our road driving next week. This year is one of the best selections of cars we've had in a, in a long time. It's such a diverse group right from hot hatches up to supercars and then a wild card like the aerial nomad or maybe the dbx so it's i think you have a few cars in in the back of your mind that you know is going to do well it's been a phenomenal year um, for performance cars which we we knew it was going to be and um, everything from toyota's new yaris gr to mclaren 765 lt new ferrari is always special 911 Turbo S, that's always going to be right up there, I think. An SUV on Evo Car of the Year, I think many of us never thought we'd see the day, but there have always been surprises. I remember there being a you know, diesel on uh, Evo Car of the Year in the past, but I think it's nice in a way because it speaks to what Evo's all about, which is the thrill of driving. There's the Cayman GTS, which I think is going to be um, a strong contender. It carries over much of the uh, mechanical stuff from last year's winner, the GT4. And then there's a the Yaris. That, I think we're all really keen to drive that car because it's that type of car is very close to Evo's heart. Nomad R, which is uh, from Ariel, which is um, probably a bit of a long shot, but a great fun car, all about the thread of driving in that. Um, Morgan's new Plus 4, another sort of contrast from some of the bigger stuff. New Golf GTI is always a contender. It's nice that there's such a mix and there's, there's some quite good rivalries between, say, the Ferrari and the Huracan and the Audi R8. That's, that's quite a nice three three car sort of you know mid-engined triple header the nice thing about having all these cars together it always throws up surprises um, and things you thought you knew sometimes uh, don't turn out to be the case so yeah that's the, the nice thing always surprising i have to call the winner now you asked me on thursday <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, if you were going for the bookie's favourite, you would probably have to go for. If, you, if you're doing a tick list, you go for Cayman GTS simply because it's got natural aspirated six cylinder engine, is going to win hearts straight away, and the you know, it's manual gearbox as well, so it's, it's always that's something to be treasured, I suppose, uh, particularly these days. Russ are really tough on this year. Um, I think the Yaris is in with a shout if they've got that right. Um, they've spent a lot of time developing that and, and getting it just right and building it for the right reasons. Um, homologation road cars always do really well. Yeah, I think M2 CS as well is, is got to be up there. 765 LT, maybe. Maybe the Yaris. <laughs> we don't know. Sixteen cars trying to whittle it down to eight to go to, to leg two in Scotland is going to be really hard.
So Anglesey is a, a regular circuit for, for Evo magazine, has been for many years actually, since uh, the original circuit was here before they did all the redevelopment. Um, in terms of a test of a car, although the lap isn't very long, it's about a mile and a half, the coastal configuration, but there's something for everything really. There's a long enough straight for a, for a powerful car, like some of the supercars we've got here, to really stretch their legs. The M2 CS is one of our one of our favourite cars of the year, obviously, because it's in this test. It's easy to see why, because it's such a compact car with such a lot of performance. So I've just been driving the 765 long tail um, and it's it's the first car actually that I've driven properly here this morning um, and it just completely blew me away. I wasn't really even um, ready for that. I had to get my brain in gear really quickly because it just feels absolutely wild. I can't over exaggerate that. It's 754 brake horsepower and it just makes Anglesey seem so, so small. Once you get your head around that, I think it's I think it's fantastic because it's just it's raw in, in the sense of you, you just feel everything and it you know it kind of tingles and you feel so connected to the car. Yeah, I've just done a couple of laps in the Ferrari, um, having done a couple of laps in the Lamborghini before that, so it's surprising the difference between the two actually. The, the Ferrari's a much more precise car, the front end of the car is more responsive and seems to have more grip. Another of the fundamental differences is the engine between this twin turbo V8 and the naturally aspirated V10, so there's a lot more torque early on, it certainly feels like in the Ferrari, so you have to be much more measured with your throttle input and your steering correction, whereas the Lamborghini is much more of an exuberant car, but it doesn't quite generate the corner speed, I don't think, so it's, at the moment, it's quite an interesting comparison between these two. The Lamborghini Huracan, certainly one of the highlights of the group so far. So this is your basic Yaris, you know, pop to the shops, one litre, no it's not, it's not that at all, this is uh, born out of the World Rally Championship and um, Tommy Rackinen's experience with uh, the likes of Elvin Evans and uh, Tanak and it is unlike any other Yaris, so we've got all-wheel drive, uh, a chunky little gearbox in there, feels, it's got all the, the nice Yaris size about it but it's much, much more aggressive. As soon as you go for first gear and you've got a really, really meaty gear shift in there and the obvious agility built into the chassis, uh, again, is something born clearly from motorsport and people that, that want that uh, agility in a car. SUVs aren't normal kind of standard Ecote fare really, but I think in, in, in this case, I think maybe we've had one or two in the past, but very, very rarely. I think the interesting thing with the, with the DBX is obviously it's an Aston Martin and it's the first time they've done this kind of car, but to have it in the company of these much more focused cars, it puts it into context and, and I think it recognises it's the achievement that, that the car is.
I, I've just literally got out of the Nomad and it's, as you'd expect, it's the wildest possible thing. It's just totally overwhelming in, in every respect. It's super quick and super loud and it's, but it's surprisingly soft because it's not really designed to work on a track. There's, it, it can kind of go anywhere. It's very, very soft on the under braking and under the acceleration, but once you get your head around that, it's just like, you know, one of those Tamiya radio control buggies? It's exactly like that, but you're sat in it. It's, it's brilliant fun. Evo Car of the Year, definitely uh, the most exciting gig of the year. We get all of the journos together, so we all have a great laugh. Um, lots of cool cars. Obviously the cover shot is the, the main banking shot this week. We've got to get all the cars before they get broken up and selected and move on to the second stage. I think we've got, was it 16 or 17 cars that we had to get into the, the cover this year? So a huge amount of shapes and sizes of selections. So at the end of day one, now that we've been at Anglesey all day, Aston's just uh, teeing up the final shots for the cover for the magazine. Um, yeah, 16 very different cars. Um, no real surprises yet, it's too early to say, um, but I'm sure tonight there'll be some deliberations, some arguments, um, and uh, a couple of reruns of spins that a few people have had on track. Um, but yeah, it's been a very good day, weather's held. Um, got another two days here, can't wait. The conditions on track today are a little bit different to how they were yesterday. So uh, yesterday it was um, sun cream weather and today it's, it's bobble hats and big jackets. Yeah, the Cayman was... Um, the gearing's so long. Um, a lot of the cars, even on the short loop around here, you're change your gear a couple of times. The, um, the Cayman, it was just all in second gear. It just about hits the limiter through the longest sweep. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a great car. It feels really planted, really connected, and you feel comfortable in the car, you know, whatever it's doing. It's a, it's a great car, but it would be you know, more exploitable if you had shorter gearing so you could rev the engine more, more entertaining as well. It's Wednesday afternoon now, and um, it's just, I think, inconceivable that it's the same day as it was this morning because uh, you saw the conditions earlier, and now we've got bright sunshine and we're in uh, short sleeves. Um, so, um, but that's Anglesey for you. I think we're really getting to the end of what we need to, to get, certainly from a photographic perspective. So um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to judging time soon. I think everybody's pretty much driven everything they need to drive now. Um, and I think it kind of rests on probably one space. One of the cars that's unlikely to go through is this one, the RS7. Um, we've been running it for, for nine months on the fleet, and it's while it's hugely competent, um, you know, for a, a two-ton, 600-horsepower super saloon, it just, just lacks that, that polish and involvement that we're looking for in a car for, for Evo car of the years. It's sort of a bit traditional Audi there, just pushing on. If you're too heavy-handed with it, it, it just doesn't like it. It just lacks a little bit of passion and soul to, to really engage you and hook you into the driving experience. Car of the Year has quite a history with Porsche 911s doing very, very well. Generally from the GT department, but this year it's the 911 Turbo S, which is 
certainly not lacking in performance. 641 brake horsepower, 590 pounds foot of torque, and it goes to all four wheels. This has to be one of the fastest cars in a sprint from 0 to 60 miles an hour as well, 2.6 seconds. And yet, it's got some rear seats back there. This really is the everyday supercar. <laughs> what a silly car. And it's so smooth. It just seems to make its pace so sort of effortlessly. This would easily, I think, keep up with the Ferrari and the McLaren, probably, certainly in the wet. And yet, it feels really pretty calm doing it. The Golf, I think that's probably right on the cusp of making it up to Scotland. It's really good, but we've got a couple of other hot hatches that really probably are just a bit more exciting, a bit more engaging. The Golf is sort of, it's sort of a bit like this in a way in terms of just its brilliant everyday usability, but then that does come at a cost a bit like this as well. Will this make it through to Scotland? It sort of seems hard to believe it won't, but I think it's, it's on the edge. We'll have to see. <laughs> Yeah, I did, <laughs> did, drive, did drive the Morgan, which, uh, I mean, it really does, it sounds like a classic car, and it uh, drives like a classic car as well. The, you know, the, the, the disconnect between what's going on at the front and what's going on at the back is quite, uh, quite challenging at times. You either get just a little slip at the back or you're almost spinning, it seems. There seems to be no middle ground to, uh, to occupy with that car. But yeah, that, again, that's another car that, on the road, I'm sure is, is lovely. I think the Ferrari was a bit of a surprise. I was um, kind of had in my head what I thought it might be, but I've not driven an F8 this year. Um, but it was it exceeded that. I just thought it was absolutely exquisite. It's it's so playful. Um, you know, it has a huge amount of grip in the dry. You can set blistering lap times with it. Uh, obviously, the straight line um, is fantastically fast. But then you get to the corners and you can still you can still adjust it. You can still play with the line, sort of you know, under the limited grip, over the limited grip. engine response is just like nothing else. How they managed to do that with a, with a turbocharged engine, I don't know, but it's, it's a really clever, special bit of kit. So I think the Ferrari's looking really, really good for Scotland. So I'm in the Alpine and um, it's very distinct from all the other cars here, it's so much lighter. You can feel that the first corner you come to you turn it in and there's just no inertia there. So um, yeah, it's, it's not the most powerful car but because it's so light it's get, it gets a real pace on really nicely and um, the handling's really tidy. It feels better tied down than the standard version I and mean, it's probably better suited to the circuit. It's always nice to get back in an Alpine. Um, it just shows that you don't have to have 
an enormous amount of power to have fun. Uh, for me, um, I think the Yaris has been a real surprise. For whatever reason, yesterday it didn't seem to figure that much and not a lot of people drove it. But today it's really come into its own. I mean, it's an absolute rocket. I don't think no one can quite believe how fast it is. Probably one too many cards for Scotland. And I think that's going to be the debate this evening is which one of those probably three cars that are in the, the danger zone, which one of those doesn't go. The Alpine's probably a bit of a shock that it's not a, a shoe-in because we enjoy the um, original standard car, the entry-level car is, is such a sweet car. But a few of us are thinking that the S doesn't bring a huge amount to the party on that car, so that's got some work to do tomorrow. Um, the Lamborghini has proven to be exceptional on track and, and great fun, but there's a question mark over its road performance. And the 911 Turbo is, it's that do-everything car, it's a bit of a Swiss army knife. It's, we know how good it is on road and it's exceptional on track. Um, and it, it's, for me, it's the favourite to go through of those three cars. Mm, it hasn't come to fighting yet, but you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few cars on the cusp and a few cars that are definitely going through. So it's up to us to decide which of those on the cusp cars gets the nod. Day three, final day, sun is back out, and this is the this is the really tricky bit, so if any of this is really tricky, where we've got to decide the final couple of places. So lots of cars, easy decision, but the last few places we've got I think three cars for two places. So yeah, decision time. <laughs> In terms of the order and what's going through to Scotland, um, there is there has been a bit of interest actually in that because there's a couple of cars which we thought were dead certs and then there's another one which we haven't even made the arrangements to go through to Scotland which actually we want now to go through so most of my morning I think is going to be on the phone trying to to make that happen basically One of the cars that isn't going through is the new Mark 8 uh, Golf GTI. It's a really good Golf GTI, a big step up. Um, and it, it, it's got a lovely synchronicity between its damping, its ride, its steering, the gearbox, the pad delivery. It's got really good traction. And it's a lovely car and a great car. If someone was to say to you, that's the only hot hatch you're going to have for a year, you'd be more than happy. Really, really impressive car. And that's the thing, all the cars here, deserve to be here it's it's it is an accolade just to have made it this far and golf gti fantastic thing i don't think anybody would uh, not want to run that every day and it, it has that fantastic breadth of ability it's just that civic type r is a more engaging hot hatch for for what we're looking for this year with the updated civic type r and toyota's yaris it's sadly it's going to be a car that we leave behind One of the cars that isn't going, which might be a surprise to some, is the R8 rear-wheel drive. Same wonderful V10 as the Lamborghini um, rear-wheel drive. It's got quite a lot going for it, but it just feels a little a little vanilla, not quite as, as crisp as you expect it to be. As a car, you, we prefer it as a Quattro. It feels like that's what it was designed to be, as, as a four-wheel drive Quattro car. Um, the rear-wheel drive doesn't really add anything. If anything, it takes away some of the crispness and the precision that a, an R8 has. It just feels short. Um, on what we're expecting. So yeah, it's not coming to Scotland with us. Another card was the Morgan. I love the way it looks. And we had a Morgan six cylinder car last year, which was great fun. This car, I think again, it's, it's more of the same. It's great to have it here and it's a change of pace and a different flavor, but I think it would be quite out of its depth in the top eight. So that's why it sadly doesn't get through. 
I love that we have such a variety of cars this year. So things like the DBX, which is really, really good and makes a very strong case for itself. It's, it's taken the SUV game on quite a large chunk. And then you've got things like the Nomad R, which is just, I mean, it, I have no idea how you categorize that car other than fun. I'm a little bit disappointed that a couple of the cars didn't get through. The, the Nomad was just the most intense, most exciting, craziest thing. But I guess it's proved its point by being part of the larger group. So I don't know that we would learn any more about the car if we took it up to Scotland. It's not perfect and it's sort of it's compromised as a road car, which is why it's not going through to Scotland. But boy, is it fun. Three cars that are joining us in Scotland are the Toyota Yaris, BMW's M2 CS and Porsche's Cayman GTS. Three very different cars, but three fantastic performance cars that just deliver everything you expect of them. The Yaris has, has been a revelation. It's everything we hoped it to be. Um, and Toyota's really delivered on its promises there. It's going to be, be fantastic, I think, up in Scotland. A real contender for, for at least a podium, if not more. The Cayman GTS, um, you know, it's got the GT4's 4-litre natural aspirated engine, um, which you might think dominates and, and overpowers your decision for that car, but everything about it, it's so well balanced, it's so good on road and track, it's so engaging with you and, and entertaining as well. No matter your ability, you get something from it. It's, it's a really great sports car. And the BMW M2 CS has just taken that M2 uh, story up to another level. <laughs> competition version was, was really impressive step up for the M2 and this CS is just that final layer of polish that uh, that makes it a very special BMW M car one of, one of the best of the recent generations so the big news is the Lamborghini is going to Scotland because it's really charmed everybody and the 911 Turbo and the Alpine are fighting it out for the last spot um, and I couldn't really call that one at the moment I think the Turbo S might just take it because I think there's a collective thought that the Alpine S doesn't move the, the standard car on enough, um, which I think will be its undoing. It's a great car, but it's not a big enough step. So would we be taking it just because it's a great car? Turbo S and Alpine, quite different cars. Um... The Alpine's not quite the car as I would hope it would, you know, it was going to be. It is a lot firmer than the standard car. So um, the Turbo S just pips it, I think. It just has more, more going for it. So yeah, that would be my decision, but you know, that's my vote. The other guys will have to get, you know, have their, their piece as well. So, but yeah, for me, Alpine just beats, uh, is just beaten by the Turbo S. I know which one I want. I think John and a couple of the other guys have decided as well. So it, it, it looks as though we're going in the direction of the Porsche just because it's, it's a bigger achievement, I think, compared to the previous model, whereas the Alpine, the, the S, doesn't really move things on significantly. So that's a good one to get nailed because I think that shapes up our final, final eight. Um, there's been some really really cool cars actually and I think this year it's going to be one of the better years we've had in a long time because we go from everything from a Yaris and a Civic Type R right up to a 765LT McLaren so and, and everything in between pretty much so I think it's going to be a fantastic trip up to Scotland quite difficult to decide between them but we've got a good few days to do that so um, yeah really looking forward to the next element. I think it's a pretty fair judgment. Uh, I think we're, we're all pretty much aligned as, as to what are the really good cars. And it is a really, really top quality set of cars going forward. I've no idea what's going to win at the moment. Um, if I was a betting man, Ferrari. But yeah, we'll keep that one in the back pocket until later. 
everything that we needed. Only one tyre was killed in the making of this production. And, and we've got our finalists, we've got our eight cars. It's been a real eye-opener for, for quite a few of us, the selection of cars we've had, um, their abilities and their breadth of talents um, on road and track. And it's been really hard to, to whittle it down to the eight. So we have our eight cars. We have the Ferrari F8, which I think has charmed everyone with its, its precision, obviously its performance, just the way it goes about everything. It's um, it really an incredible machine. I think that's a real favourite for next week. We have the McLaren 765 LT, which is just a complete animal. It's a force of nature that had to go through. We have the Porsche Cayman GTS, four litre, which Again, has done really, really well. Perhaps not so much of a track car, but it's, it's still impressed everyone. And I think we know that's going to be great on the roads up there. Um, with the new Yaris, that's been possibly the, the biggest excitement of the, of the whole week, I think. Everything that we hoped it would be so far, can't wait to drive that on the road. Oh, we have the Honda Civic Type R. Civic is just an immense machine, so well engineered. It just feels so at home on the track. We know it's going to be good on the road. Really, really pleased to see that there. Uh, we have the 911 Turbo S. A little bit more controversy around that. Wasn't sure whether it was going through or not, but it's made it. We have the BMW M2 CS, which I think has been a real favorite this year. And we always knew, I think that one was going to go through. It's a great character, real big character of a car. And finally, we've got the uh, Lamborghini Huracan Evo rear wheel drive, which some of us thought might not make it, but I think when the, the big green beast turned up and, and made that noise, yeah, I think it really won people over as the week progressed. So eight incredible cars. Can't wait to see how they get on in Scotland. The cover photo looked lovely. I mean, we were so blessed with the sunset. Um, and as I said, the, the, the cars are great colours, great shapes, so to have all of that together in one place, you couldn't wish for more. Next week in Scotland, it's going to be even better, you know, opening up to the scenery, uh, all the different elements of weather, um, yeah, so it's going to be great.